adjustment to urban life in the North, the assistance needed and sometimes received, the efforts to assimilate will be the topics of our Unit 2 in the Great Migration. Black entrepreneurs met the needs of every segregated community. One of the most successful entrepreneurs was Madam C.J. Walker. Madam C.J. Walker was an entrepreneur of Ameri African American hair products for women. Her Walker system was an ingenious system that provided African American women formal training in cleanliness, loveliness, and the marketing of her products to other African American women. She was the first female self-made millionaire in American history. Walker was also a philanthropist, donating her money to the NAACP, the YMCA, and the National Conference on Lynching. The black press were the daily and weekly newspapers of some urban African American communities, published by and for African Americans. Newspapers such as the Chicago Defender and the Pittsburgh Courier served as the purveyors of news and information and as an agent for social change. The black press was central to community formation, protest, and advocacy, education and literacy, and economic self-sufficiency. The Negro Leagues were the professional baseball teams comprised of African Americans and Latin Americans. Clubs like the Pittsburgh Crawfords, the Kansas City Monarchs, and the Homestead Grays were the pride of African American communities in northern cities those who were lucky enough to have a club. Negro League stars such as Satchel Paige, Josh Gibson, Cool Papa Bell, and Monty Irvin have been elected to the Baseball Hall of Fame. There were many competing voices in Great Migration politics, most of them challenging the 19th century policies established by Booker T. Washington in his Atlanta Compromise speech. W.E.B. Du Bois was the first African American to receive a doctorate from Harvard. This pan African and socialist scholar, sociologist, educator, historian, and writer refuted the myths of racial inferiority. Du Bois was the founder and general secretary of the Niagara Movement in 1905. He was also one of the founders of the NAACP in 1909. Du Bois served as the director of this organization from 1910 to 1934. It was the protest organization of its time. Du Bois is pictured here with Walter White, who oftentimes investigated lynchings for the NAACP. Dedicated to full political and civil rights for African Americans through litigation, the NAACP led the fight to end lynching, segregation, and unfair practices in unemployment and housing. Du Bois was the founder and editor of The Crisis, the journal of the NAACP, a source of information and protest. The literary editor of the crisis, Jesse Redmond Faust, was instrumental in introducing young African-American writers such as County Cullen, Claude McKay, and Langston Hughes to a national audience. She was an essayist, novelist, and poet who focused on African-American issues. Another important figure was Marcus Garvey, who founded the United Negro Improvement Association in his native Jamaica in 1914. He moved to New York City in 1916. The UNIA was based on two ideas that were emphasized in its publication, The Negro World. Blacks should recolonize their African homeland and the slogan, Black is Beautiful. The UNIA was based in Pan-Africanism Black empowerment, racial pride, and black separatisms. 
Blacks should not envy or imitate whites or seek integration. By the mid-1920s, 500,000 African Americans had joined the ranks of the UNIA. The most important civil rights leader to emerge from the labor movement was A. Philip Randolph, a socialist and president of the Brotherhood of Sleeping Car Porters. He consistently kept interests of black workers at the forefront of the racial agenda. In 1917, on the eve of the Harlem Renaissance, Randolph co-founded The Messenger, a political and literary magazine with a socialist agenda. African-American women were also politically active in groups such as the National Association of Colored Women and the Colored Federated Clubs. Educator Mary McLeod Bethune emerged a national leader and advisor to FDR due to her activism in women's clubs. Minister and theologian Howard Thurman intellectually and spiritually influenced an entire generation of civil rights leaders, including Dr. Martin Luther King, by bringing the ideas of nonviolence to the African-American fight for civil rights after visiting India and meeting Mahatma Gandhi in 1935. Gandhi reportedly told Thurman that, quote, it may be through the Negroes that the unadulterated message of nonviolence will be delivered to the world. Due to the Great Migration, the establishment of Harlem as a center for civil rights and black culture, and events like the Silent March and World War I, Alain Locke proclaimed, a new spirit is awake in the masses. Based in northern cities, the new Negro movement promoted full social and political equality, black life, black voices, and an African heritage. An unprecedented deluge of artistic endeavors, plays, novels, poetry, prose, music, and visual arts flooded out of Harlem and elsewhere. These achievements collectively became known as the Harlem Renaissance. Harlem Renaissance artists, Aaron Douglas and Jacob Lawrence, depicted African-American culture and history in their paintings. James Van Der Zee documented everyday African-American life in his photographs. After a dinner at the Civic Club, Sterling Brown devised five major literary themes of Harlem Renaissance literature. Africa as a source of racial pride, Black American heroes, racial political propaganda, the Black folk tradition, and candid self-revelation. Note these themes as we briefly discuss the achievements of the following Harlem Renaissance writers. Let's take a look at historian Carter G. Woodson. Woodson traveled throughout the world and earned his doctorate in history from Harvard in 1912. He devoted his life to the Association for the Study of Negro Life and History and the Early Black History Movement. He's rightfully known as the father of black history. Black attorney, educator, author, songwriter, and civil rights activist James Weldon Johnson penned the autobiography of an ex-colored man and the poem Lift Every Voice and Sing, which set to music became known as the Negro National Anthem. Charles S. Johnson studied the social condition of black communities under Jim Crow and emerged as the nation's leading scholar of black sociology. He also founded the professional magazine Opportunity that published research and essays on the effects of Jim Crow on African-American communities. 
Charles S. Johnson published the short stories of Howard University graduate Zora Neale Hurston in Opportunity. Hurston studied anthropology with Jewish American anthropologist Franz Boas at Barnard University and soon after wrote plays and novels based in African-American rural folk life. Her most famous work, Their Eyes Were Watching God, was published in 1937. Published in 1923, Jean Toomer's Cain addressed many themes, including the destructive influence of industrialization and urbanization on black folk cultures and the problematic influence of Christianity on African America's response to racial oppression. The most lasting contribution of the Harlem Renaissance may have been in poetry. Poets County Cullen, Claude McKay, and Langston Hughes made their reputations during the 1920s. County Cullen, son of the president of the Harlem branch of the NAACP, had a very conventional approach to poetry, shunning experimentation in form and subject matter. Claude McKay's poetry was infused with militant politics and his memories of rural Jamaica, perhaps one of his most famous poems being America. The politically engaged writer Langston Hughes wrote poetry that represented the experiences and culture of rural and urban working class African Americans while celebrating blues and jazz culture. I think it impossible to teach the 1920s without using Harlem Renaissance literature. Two books that depict one Jewish immigration and the other great migration for students in grades four through six are Catherine Lasky's Dreams in the Golden Country, the Diary of Zipporah Feldman, a Jewish Immigrant Girl, and Patricia C. McKissack, Color Me Dark, the Diary of Nellie Lee Love, the Great Migration North. Enjoy reading literature with your students in your history classrooms.